The hard part of the process for most people is the first $100,000. If you have a standing start at zero, getting together $100,000 is a long struggle. That's billionaire Charlie Munger, who has talked about saving $100,000. But did you know that around 57% of Americans had less than $1,000 in their savings? Even more scary is that about one third of Americans had less than $100 saved up. These numbers might seem shocking, but they highlight a common struggle. Getting started with saving is often the hardest part. But once you manage to save that first $10,000, everything changes. The next $10,000 often comes much faster. And before you know it, your savings are growing at a pace that once seemed impossible. Why is that? Well, it all comes down to how money works for you over time. In today's video, we're going to discuss exactly why saving that first $10,000 is so challenging and why the next $100,000 can seem to come much easier. We'll break down the math behind it, explain how compound interest kicks in, and give you practical tips to make saving easier, no matter where you are on your financial journey. So make sure to watch the video till the end. And if you're new to our channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you won't miss out on the valuable insights we share in our future videos. Why saving your first $10,000 feels like climbing a mountain. All right, so let's start from why that first $10,000 feels like such a mountain to climb. You might have heard the saying, the first $10,000 is the hardest. It's a common belief among those who have reached financial independence, and there's a solid reason behind it. Think of achieving financial independence as running a marathon. The first few kilometers are often the toughest. You're building momentum, trying to find your pace, and everything feels like it's moving slowly. The $10,000 milestone is like that moment in the race when you finally get your second wind. Things start to get easier, and the pace picks up. So, why is this the case? Well, it all comes down to simple math, particularly something known as compound interest. Albert Einstein famously said, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it, he who doesn't, pays it. This quote perfectly sums up the power of compound interest, which is the concept of earning a return, not just on your initial investment, but also on the returns that accumulate over time. So what does this mean for you? The key takeaway here is patience and persistence. The first $10,000 might feel like it's taking forever, but don't get discouraged. Understand that this is normal and the hard work you're putting in now is laying the foundation for much faster growth in the future. Stick with it, keep saving, and remember that the power of compound interest is on your side. Before you know it, you'll be reaching new financial milestones with ease. How to start small and let compound interest work for you. Moving forward next, let's discuss numbers to see exactly how this plays out over time. First, let's say you start with just $10 or $100, whatever you can manage. The key is to begin with something, no matter how small. It's not about the amount you start with, it's about building the habit of saving consistently. Begin by setting aside a small portion of your income each month, aiming for an amount that's sustainable for you. Whether it's $10, $50, or $100 a month, the goal is to make saving a regular part of your routine. As you continue saving, you'll notice your balance slowly growing. Let's say you're able to save $100 every month. In one year, that's $1,200. Over time, as your savings grow, you can start to invest this money, even in low-risk investments like a savings account or a basic index fund, which can offer a small return. Now, moving forward, let's discuss how these numbers play out over time with the power of compound interest. Imagine you have $10,000 invested and you're getting a hypothetical annual return of 5%. After one year, you'll have earned an extra $500 without doing anything else. That's your money starting to work for you. Fast forward 10 years, and that initial $10,000 will have grown by about $6,000 thanks to the power of compound interest. Now $6,000 might not seem like a huge amount, especially when you compare it to what someone with $100,000 would earn. If you had $100,000 invested at the same 5% return, you'd make an extra $5,000 in just one year. Over 10 years, that's more than $62,000 added to your savings. It's easy to see why it's so much easier to grow your wealth after you've already built up a solid base. But here's the key point. When you're just starting, that initial growth might feel small and slow. And that's completely normal. 
It can be discouraging when you're only seeing a few hundred dollars added to your savings each year. But remember, this is just the beginning. The effort you put into saving now is what sets the stage for much larger growth down the road. So what should you do? The most important thing is to keep saving and stay consistent. Even if the returns seem small at first, don't give up. Every dollar you add to your savings today is another dollar that will work for you tomorrow. And over time, as your savings grow, the impact of compound interest will become more and more significant. It's also crucial to keep your focus on the long-term goal of financial independence. The journey might be slow at first, but the rewards will come. By continuing to save and invest, you're building a financial foundation that will pay off in the future. The more you save, the easier it becomes to reach those bigger milestones like $50,000 or $100,000. The power of consistency, making your money work for you. All right, so far, we now understand that the initial growth of your savings can feel slow and the magic of compound interest takes time to really kick in. But here's where your efforts really make a difference, especially when you're working towards that first $10,000. The journey to that first $10,000 is often the hardest part, and it requires the most effort on your end. Why? Because at this stage, the two main factors in the growth formula, your initial savings amount, and the time those savings have been invested, are both still pretty small. That means the exponential growth we talked about earlier hasn't had a chance to take off yet. Here's what you need to focus on, your ability to save. Let's say you're able to save $833 a month, which adds up to $10,000 in just one year. With a hypothetical annual return of 5%, you've already reached that $10,000 milestone within a year. But here's the kicker. When you're first starting out, most of that $10,000 will come directly from your own savings, and only a small portion will come from the compounding effect. This shows just how crucial it is to be disciplined and consistent with your savings especially in the beginning. As you continue saving and reach your next $10,000, things start to shift. Now the money you're saving each year becomes a smaller part of your total wealth. For example, when you're working towards $20,000, about two thirds of that growth will still come from your savings. But the compounding effect is starting to play a bigger role. And it only gets better from there. By the time you've accumulated $20,000, the interest or returns on your savings will start to match what you're putting away each year. So, if you've got $20,000 saved up and are earning that same 5% return, you're looking at $1,000 a year just from interest, without any extra effort. This is why staying consistent with your savings in the early stages is so important. The more you save now, the faster you'll hit those bigger milestones and the more your money will start working for you instead of the other way around. Keep your eye on the long-term goal, stick to your savings plan, and remember that while the first $10,000 is the hardest, it's also the most important step towards building real financial independence. The effort you put in now will set you up for faster and easier growth in the future. Controlling lifestyle inflation, the key to building wealth. Now we have understand everything we need to know about why saving your first 10,000 is harder than your next, but there is one important thing to understand, and that is how things including lifestyle inflation start to speed up after you hit that milestone. The power of compound interest really kicks in once you've built a solid foundation. For example, it might take you just over eight years to save your first $10,000, but reaching your next $10,000 could take you less than six years about 30% less time. And as your savings grow, this acceleration only continues. The more you save, the faster your money grows and the less effort it takes to accumulate even more. But here's something you need to be mindful of. Lifestyle inflation. As your income increases, it's easy to start spending more on things like a nicer car, more subscriptions, or dining out more frequently. These things can slowly eat away at the money you could be saving. To reach that first $10,000, you have to learn how to control this kind of spending. Investor Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's longtime partner, had some blunt advice on this. He said, the first $10,000 is a B, but you gotta do it. I don't care what you have to do. If it means walking everywhere and not eating anything that wasn't purchased with a coupon, find a way to get your hands on $10,000. After that, you can ease off the gas a little bit. So how do you keep lifestyle inflation in check and build a strong saving habit? 
First, it's important to draw up a budget. Take a good look at your income and expenses, which will help you see where your money is going and identify areas where you can cut back. By analyzing your spending habits over the last few months, you can gain a clear understanding of where adjustments need to be made. Once you have a budget in place, set ambitious but realistic goals. These goals could be short-term, like saving for a vacation, medium-term, like buying a car, or long-term, like reaching financial independence. Your goals should align with your budget and savings capacity to ensure they are achievable. Another key habit is to pay yourself first. Instead of saving what's left after spending, flip that around. Save first, then spend what's left. This approach helps you prioritize savings and ensures that you consistently set aside money for your future. Automating your savings with every paycheck makes this process even easier. And as your income grows, try to increase your savings rate accordingly. Lastly, getting advice is crucial. Learning about saving and investing can make a huge difference in your financial journey. Whether you seek knowledge through books, online resources, or professional financial advice, having the right support will help you make smarter decisions and stay on track with your savings goals. By focusing on these strategies, you'll not only be able to save your first $10,000, but also build strong financial habits that will support your long-term success. All right, friends, we've seen saving your first $10,000 might be the hardest part of your financial journey, but it's also the most important. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join our community. We're here to help you navigate your financial journey with tips, advice, and plenty of encouragement. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.